People living in a village in Norfolk say their pets are being terrorised by dogs. Claire Frost had to fight two loose dogs after they got into her home in Newton Flotman and killed her cat. You may find her story upsetting. I heard my black Labrador growling and snarling, which I knew he, he doesn't do. When Claire Frost went to investigate, she saw two bull terriers racing across her garden. Her blind cat, Hogan, heard the noise. Then she said the dogs grabbed him and dragged him into the house. The white one had him by his head on the, on the floor and the brown one was sort of jumping at his legs. So I got on the floor and I started to hit the dog on the side of the head really hard where its eyes were to, to get it off Hogan. Hogan was kicking with his back legs and he was, he was trying to, to get away and um, it started to crush his head. The dogs eventually ran off and went into neighbour Julie Dow's house. She managed to lock her cat in the bedroom, but says people on the estate are scared. Even my local shop said that they're never known to be so quiet. Not everybody's on holiday in the village. And it's just like, you got the local park and there's no kids about playing, because uh, they've been the dogs up there playing. Norfolk police have confirmed a cat and a dog have died here on the estate in separate dog attacks. They say while no one yet has been arrested for it, they are investigating, but their powers are limited. The 1991 Act only covers dogs that are out of control in a public place like a street or park, or in a private place if the dog was invited to enter. It's a law that only protects injury to a person, not other animals. I want the law changed so that you are protected. As far as I can understand it, the dogs can come back and come in and do the same thing again and there is nothing I can do. A builder from Cambridgeshire who ran a major drugs ring is facing a long jail sentence. 50-year-old Marcus Brown, who lives in Guyhern near Wisbeach, was found guilty at Nottingham Crown Court today. He was arrested after the police filmed bags being dropped from a plane. The transport company Stagecoach has agreed in principle to buy part of National Express. Stagecoach is part of a Spanish-led consortium which wants to buy the rail franchise for East Anglia. The company currently runs bus services in Cambridgeshire, Northamptonshire and Bedfordshire. Essex has become the first county in Britain to outsource all its social care to a private company. The council has signed a three-year deal with the company which will remain under its control. If the idea is successful, other services could follow suit. It was a carefully stage managed launch of a pioneering new business. Essex Cares is a private company owned by the county council. 70,000 vulnerable people need it to be a success. People like Mark Belsey, who's training to be a chef at a day centre now run by Essex Cares. I like to get a job in a pub. There's always somebody on the other phone to talk to that before we never had because you used to go from one department to another, but now Essex Care is there. It's all under one roof. It's brilliant. The change will save the council money, but it will also enable it to sell care to anyone, even outside the county. An extra day's respite here or a training programme there. This is not about us trying to make huge profits. This is about us trying to make sure that we have a flexible, adaptable service that can reach a wider number of the Essex population and provide a first-class service which delivers the best quality of life for those citizens. If the switch is a success, other services like roads and schools could also be outsourced to similar companies. What I wouldn't want to see is to go to the private, into the private sector and uh, I suppose the money, the profits, because this is about money at the end of the day, that the monies do not remain in Essex and it goes in the pockets of the private sector. But the council insists all profits will go back into care to the people who need it most. Joel Mapp, BBC Look East, Chelmsford. Big crowds turned out at Woodbridge in Suffolk today to watch a freedom parade by 300 local soldiers. They're from 2-3 Engineer Regiment, based at the nearby Rock Barracks. The march took them past the historic Shire Hall. The music came from the Band of the Irish Guards. The regiment was originally granted the freedom of the town three years ago. The turnout has been absolutely fantastic. The, uh, the support the regiment gets from Woodbridge and the community here has, has always been great. And we were asked by the mayor if we would care to, to march through the, uh, the town. Um, and I have to say, I didn't really expect quite the turnout today. Every single bit of the, the route was lined. 
Breckland Council in Norfolk has been criticised for spending millions of pounds on a luxury hotel only for the tenants to default on their payments. The council bought the Barnum Broom Hotel and Golf Club three years ago, but says it wasn't a mistake. Checking in at Barnum Broom, but should the council have checked out its investments? The hotel cost £7 million three years ago, but Barnum Broom Limited isn't up to date with its rent, leaving the council open to criticism. It makes one wonder whether the appropriate level of risk assessment was undertaken at the time they decided to make this investment. This is public money. It belongs to taxpayers. And the council has a job to do. And the job of the council is to provide public services. It's not to be a business investor. And if it can't do it very well, perhaps it ought not to do it at all. It's no secret that the council had been investing in a property portfolio. What our aim is, is to actually reduce the council tax by investing the money we have in the bank into other businesses to make sure that that money earns more money than we currently earn at base rate, therefore reducing our council tax down over the next four to five years to zero. The council said that investing in this hotel was certainly not a mistake. And they'll continue to look at commercial opportunities, which mean that they can provide a council tax which is one of the lowest in the country. The hotel says it's renegotiating the rent, but for now, it's business as usual. We employ 120 people, all local people, um, so obviously we're, we're employing people, creating wealth in the area. Now the Audit Commission is monitoring how the council spends its money. And Jana Gadgill for BBC Look East in Barnum Broom. You're watching Look East from the BBC. Coming up, how the dreams of this former zookeeper have taken flight. Seventy years ago, a young stockbroker helped to save hundreds of children from almost certain death. With the Nazis in control, they were taken by train from Prague across Europe to a new life. The children entered Britain through Harwich in Essex, and today a commemorative Winton train retraced the last stage of their journey to safety. Nineteen thirty nine, the Nazis persecution of Czechoslovakia's Jews was underway. Hundreds of families were forced into refugee camps around Prague. A young British man, Nicholas Winton, realized their plight. In the months before war broke out, he organized trains to take children to England and safety. Today, seventy years on, many of those Winton children were back in Harwich once more, the final leg of a four day commemorative journey from Prague. Suzanne Medus was one of many who left their parents behind. She ended up living in Cambridge. We travelled in seal trains so that the Germans could not get at us because we had to travel through Germany. I remember the Germans shaking their fists at us because they couldn't get at us. What the parents said to me and also what they said to the children, go and have a nice time when you come back you'll tell us all about it i remember air raid shelters being built in cambridge but uh, in fact i don't remember any air raids i remember a siren but i don't remember actually any air raids in cambridge after war broke out suzanne's parents were gassed in auschwitz she and 668 others owed their lives to nicholas winton if we hadn't had the opportunity to get out of czechoslovakia i wouldn't be sitting here now 99% of the children never saw their families again. And today was time for the final leg of the journey that 70 years ago saved so many lives. Richard Daniel, BBC Look East, Harwich.